Timberlands, audacity aliens, calling us immigrants, the gospel preachers, vengeance in our forefathers' penmanship, bishop and leadership point, and we go mission, no ego tripping, I'm old school, Coleco vision, sort of the earth, so frito, Chico listen, I'm frito, team of Jordans that don't need no pippin', welcome home packed in Chico, but we no listen, on Passover, we eat lamb, we don't eat no chicken, X7. It's getting better, it's getting better. We're going level up. Water level's rising. Listen to the E from my... Yo. Slept in the cell. Slept on the floor. Uh. Slept on myself, but never slept on the door. Never. Yeah. See, we was underdogs. Now we on the board, like... From underdogs to underboard, up in the score, keeping it the hundred. I got a hundred and forty-four coming. They cutting the doctrine, y'all pumping and run with it. Big bang, get cast down. Baron straight, getting cast down. Pangea, cast down. Evolution, get cast down. You come with another doctrine on school grounds. Spit chilly, you a class clown. Yo, catch me zoom now. Let's rise and face Jerusalem. Israel, blue trumpet. Trumpets down. Lord, I cried unto thee, make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing. To practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. And let me not eat their dainties. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. Which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. When their judges are overthrown in stony places. They shall hear my words. For they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth as when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth. But mine eyes are unto thee, O God, the Lord, and thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets whilst that I withal escape. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Son, Jesus the Christ, we ask that you bless the bishops, deacons, captains, officers, soldiers, men, women, and children. We ask, O oh Lord, that you bless the congregation, that you heal the sick amongst us, that you heal Sister Yashika, that you hear Brother David Lazarus, that you hear Sister Abby, that you hear all those sisters, O oh Lord, that are sick and brothers that are sick, all those sisters who are about to get birth, that you bless their babies, O oh Heavenly Father. We ask, O oh Lord, that you bless this congregation with new laborers, O oh Lord, and that you allow us to go into further countries in the east. Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, we ask that you bless this congregation with more understanding, O oh Lord, and that you bless us to be able to to fellowship more often. Repeat after me. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of our son, Jesus the Christ, we ask and we pray. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, hand salute. Salute down, face sisters. To all the daughters and mothers of Sarah, we say shalom. All praises, all praises. Praises to the Most High. Shalom, shalom. Good morning. Most High Christ bless you all. Uh, today's topic is called the KJV Translation. 
the KJV translation. We're going to go into a little history on the records of our forefathers, which is the Bible, how the Bible was rewritten during different times, all right? Then we're going to go up to today, all right, about the King James Version. Then we're going to go into the NIV. So get your Bibles, pens, notebooks ready. Now, a question that comes up often with believers that come in where you're new is what do I study? What do I study? Is I'm still new. I don't understand what I'm reading. A good book to study is Ecclesiasticus, Sirach. That's a really good book to study, along with already doing the four chapters a day online. Sirach is an excellent book to study because it's one of the more easier books to understand the way it's written. It goes over how to speak, how to talk, how to study. It goes over this Hard sayings in there as well, but it answers all questions. Let's go to the prologue of Sirach. Go to the prologue of Sirach. All right. So we're going to Ecclesiasticus. We're going to go to the prologue. Now, some of you don't have the apocrypha in the Bible, so I'm not sure how I'm going to have you find this. Okay. Hold on. Let me go to it. Ecclesiasticus. Okay. Prologue. Now, we're going to read. It's page what? Page 70. Okay, now wait, you got the, okay, let me see. I want to make this easy for y'all. Okay, you see where it says the second paragraph, whereas many and great things have been delivered unto us. Y'all see that, brothers? Y'all see that, sisters? Okay, start reading from right here. Okay, go ahead, read that. The prologue of Sirach. Whereas many... And great things have been delivered unto us by the law and the prophets. Okay. And by others that have followed their steps. All right. For that which... Re remember, Sirach, Jesus ben Sirach, is during the Greek captivity. This is around the Greek time period, all right? So go ahead. Keep reading. Followed their steps for that which thinks Israel ought to be commanded for learning and wisdom. All right. And where, whereof, not only the readers must needs become skillful themselves. So us as readers, because we now have learned the Bible is the source of our identity. If we want to learn about black, Latino, Native American, descendants of the slave trade, we want to learn about our history. What book do we read? The Bible. That's what we've learned. This is the Bible. Now, he's saying, us, the readers... We must become skillful. Go ahead. But also, they that desire to learn. We should have a desire to learn. We should have a desire to learn. Come on. Be able to profit them which are without, both by speaking and writing. Come on. My grandfather Jesus, when he had much given himself to the reading of the law and the prophets and other books of our fathers and had gotten therein, Good judgment uh -huh. was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to learning and wisdom. He wanted to write a book that pertained to learning and wisdom. When you read Sirach, a lot of it is guidance. Who to listen to in counsel. What account, what to be mindful of when taking counsel. It's all about guidance. All right, go ahead. To the intent that those which are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things. And this is what we're supposed to become addicted to, learning. Come on. Might profit much more in living according to the law. Now watch this. Read this. Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention. All right. And to pardon us, wherein we may seem to come short of some words, which we have labored to interpret. Uh-huh. For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. So what he's talking about is translation between two different languages. It's, it was a very painful task, he's saying, when we were trying to translate this into another language for you. The point and the thought is the same, but some words don't have that same meaning. Watch, you're going to see he says this. Read on. And not only these things, but the law itself uh -huh. and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference. When they are spoken in their own language, for in the eighth and thirteenth year coming uh -huh. into Egypt, when Eugates was king and continued there some time, 
I found a book of so no small learning. That book. I found a book of no small learning. This is what his father had prepared for him. All right. So this is a good book to study when you come into the Sirach. Read Sirach. Sirach is an excellent book. You read it over and over again. Now, that was just that part. Okay, so now. The King James Version translation. Now, look at this now. This is a quote. Some of us have heard this quote before, so I wanted to write it down. Okay. History is written by victors. Who heard that quote before? Raise your hand, brothers and sisters. History is written by victors. Now, I'm right, now I wrote down what else they attached to the quote. Now, this is allegedly by Winston Churchill, the devil, but they said it's quoted from an unknown source. So it really wasn't from him, but a lot of time he is associated with the quote. It says it implies that history is not grounded in facts, Rather, it's the winner's interpretation of them that prevail. The victors can force their narrative down on people. Now, we know the Bible is a true book. Everything in the Bible is a fact. Now, go to Psalms 19.7. Psalms 19.7. Psalms 19.7. History is written by victors. Hmm. Psalms 19 and 7. Read this. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. Now, what do we want to pull out of here to prove that this Bible, everything in here, are facts? What part do we want to pull out? Ezra. $57,000 truck. Ezra. Uh, making wise is simple. Nope. Nope. Give it to this brother in the front. This brother in the front. Brother Jacob. Brother Jacob. How long you been with us? Now, going on four months. Four months. Okay. New. Okay. All right. So let's see if you get this. All right. Four months. The Lord, the Lord is perfect. Perfect. No. 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 Something we want. Something we want. Give it to the brother with the glasses. The older gentleman. Older brother, right there with the glasses. <laughs> Shalom. Yes. Converting the soul. No. No. Nope, nope, nope. There's nothing wrong with those answers, but that's not what we want with what we're talking about. Give it to this brother right behind you. Yes. Right behind you. Right behind you. Right there. With his, raise his hand. That's Levi Benjamin. I'm not sure. The, the testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Remember, this Bible, this is testimony. Jeremiah, that's a testimony. Isaiah, that's a testimony. Everything they wrote is sure. The history and the, all of it is sure. Now, get Isaiah 29, 15. Esau did something. He changed things. Esau changed things now. That's why that quote I wanted to read, it said, history is written by victors. Esau wanted to change things around. Read this now, Isaiah 29, verse 15. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 15. Yes, sir. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, uh -huh. and their works are in the dark. Uh -huh. And they say, who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Watch this. Surely you're turning of things upside down. Surely you're turning of things upside down. Come on. Shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Uh -huh. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not. Right. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? Notice it says, surely you're turning of things upside down. Esau, the white man, has turned history upside down. The white man says, God does not exist. That this is, what is it called? The Big Bang Theory. The white man said, but if there was a God, he's Caucasian. If there was a God, he's Caucasian. The white man says here in America, the woman is equal to the man. She is not, you're not above her. She is equal to you. The white man says we come from apes. It's all full of lies. That's why it says surely a turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. The white man said civilization started with the who? The Greeks. That's a lie. 
He was able to change this. He was able to change this. Why? Because the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Now, go to Job 9.24. Job 9.24. Job chapter 9, verse 24. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Who covers the faces of the judges thereof, brothers? Who did that? Esau, the white man, he did that. It says the earth, read it again from the top. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Uh -huh. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Uh -huh. If not, where and who is he? So now, this is why it's important for us to study and read and teach properly. Psalm 78, verse 1. Psalm 78, verse 1. Psalm 78, verse 1. Read this now. The book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 1. Yes. Give here, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. Right. I will utter dark sayings of old, uh -huh. which I have heard and known, and our fathers have I told us. We will not hide them from their children, shown to the generation. We will not hide them from our children. Go ahead, read on. Shown to the generation to come. The praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. A lot of our people still don't know Christ is a black man. A lot of our people still don't know that. We were just in Yonkers teaching and the black Christian woman with her big black nose said, how dare you say Jesus Christ is a black man? Don't you ever say that. This is what she said. So she got mad. I was like, miss, you don't know the Bible. Just get away from me. Then I had to go on the mic. We had to blast the hell out of her. But a lot of, see, you meet some brothers in the streets, and they're like, yeah, 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 Christ is black. But a lot of our people still don't know he's black. That's why it says, show unto the generations to come the praise of the Lord. That's why it's important for us to teach this to the children, to, our, to the young black men out in the street, because we're showing them our identity is out right here in the Bible. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Matthew 15 and verse 1. Matthew 15, verse 1. This is the problem right here. Read this. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 1. Then came Jesus' scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the, the traditions of the elders? That's what Christianity is about, tradition. That's what this is about. Christianity is about traditions passed down starting from slavery. Tradition, tradition. That's it. No understanding. Why are we going to church? Because we have to. Why are we Jehovah's Witness? Because that's what your grandmother was. It's tradition. But nobody, none of us in the church ever really learn with understanding. Remember the scripture says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get what? Understanding. There is no understanding in the church. There is no understanding. Now watch this. Keep reading. For they wash their hands when they eat bread. For but, they wash not their hands. For, the? Yeah. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Uh -huh. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God? By your traditions. By your traditions. By your traditions. Now, go to the Bible Dictionary. We're going to go to the Bible Dictionary. Go to Occupations and Professions. Occupations and Professions. Zon this is in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. I want you to read about scribes. Remember, this Bible is our history book. Our forefathers wrote this down about what was going on in their time period, what they saw, how our forefathers were conducting themselves, and prophecy on what would happen in the future. Many a times we lost our records, and then our forefathers had to rewrite them. Read this now. This is the Bible, Zonovan Bible Dictionary. Scribes. Class of learned men okay. who made the systematic study of the law 
and its exposition, their professional occupation, also called lawyers. Uh-huh. They devoted themselves to the privation of transcription and exposition of the law. To safeguard the sanctity of the law, they gradually developed an extensive and complicated system of teaching known as the, the traditions of the elders. So now, go to 1 Kings 4 and 3. I'm going to show you a few examples of scribes, those that made sure they kept our records. This is 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 3. Read this. The book of 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 3. Eliphaz and Ahiah. Wait, wait. Say that name again. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 3. Elpha and Ahia, the are sons. Are y'all reading what I'm reading? What is that word? What is the name? Ahia. Elehoref. Elehor. Oh, Elehoref. What was he reading? <laughs> I'm not the best reader, but what was that? <laughs> Read that again. Take your time, Benjamin. Yes, sir. Yes, Damn. Sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Read it again. Yeah. Elihora. El- Elifora. Elifora. All right. So. Elehoref and Ahiah, the sons of Shisha, scribes. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, the recorder. We're going to go to a few scriptures on scribes and recorders. These are our forefathers that made sure they were record keepers. Remember, this Bible is a record. That's one. Go to 1 Chronicles 24, 6. Let's give them another try. Let's see. I know a lot of times brothers don't like Chronicles because of the hard names. We're used to Trayvon, Deontay, Raheem, 1 Chronicles 24 and 6. How many of y'all brothers here got your name changed? Raise your hand. Wow. Wow. You know how you could tell who have slave names when they send PayPal donations? When they send PayPal donations. Bro, there was a brother named, what's his name? Here in the school. What was his name? Benjamin, Jamaican, what's that name? It was bad. It was bad. No, no, it was worse. Kim Rush. Kim Ron. Was it Kim Ron? It was bad. Yo, it was bad. It was bad. I had to find this brother. He's here in the school. He at camp right now. You're going to see it later on. I'm going to tell his name. It's bad. That's how you see the real names. When they send PayPal donations, you see all these weird names. I was like, what? Get the name changed. First Chronicles 24 and 6. Read this. All right, the book of First Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 6. Uh-huh. And Shemaiah, the son of Nephel, the scribe, one of the Levites, wrote them before the king. And the prince and Zadok, the priest, and Ahimelech, the son of Abathar. And before the chief of the fathers of the priests and the Levites, one principal household being taken for Eleazar. So notice it said Nathaniel the scribe. Now watch this now. First Chronicles 27, verse 32. First Chronicles 27, verse 32. Oh, you're going to see what's going to happen. First Chronicles 27, 32. The book of First Chronicles, chapter 27, verse 32. And also Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a wise man, and a scribe, and Jehel, the son of Hamath, uh, Hathman, was the king's son. I didn't son. see that. Read it. Try it again. Hakman. Hakmanai. Hakmanai was the king's son. Okay. Go to Jeremiah 36 and 10. It called Jonathan a scribe. Okay. We build in a case here. Jeremiah 36 and 10. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 36 and verse 10. Then read Baruch in the book. Then read Baruch. Then read Baruch in the book, the words of Jeremiah. Okay. In the house of the Lord, in the chamber of Jeremiah, Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe in the higher court and the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. In the heirs of all the people. So Baruch was the scribe to Jeremiah. Baruch kept records. And Baruch is also found where, brothers? Apocrypha. 
This is a precept to also show you the Apocrypha is in the Bible. That's how you could connect. The scribe to Jeremiah was Baruch, which you find in the Apocrypha. Now, here's now to some translations now. Let's go to Proverbs 25 and verse 1. Proverbs 25, verse 1. Now we're going to go into when our forefathers lost the records of the scriptures. Proverbs 25 and verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 25 and verse 1. These are also Proverbs of Solomon. Okay. Which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, which the, it says, these are the Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. Out. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 1 to 5. No, no, no. No. Second Kings 22, verse 1 to 8. Second Kings 22, verse 1 to 8. Second Kings 22, verse 1. This is during the reign of Josiah. Go ahead. The book of Second Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign and reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. Okay. And his mother's name was Jediah, the daughter of Adahiah of Basketh. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of David, his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Come on. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Aziel, the son of the son of Azaliah, Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe to the house of the Lord, saying. Now watch this. Read on. Go up to Elika. Go up to Hilkiah. Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. Come on. And let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord. This is when they're repairing the temple. Now watch this. Verse 8 is the point. Read on. To repair the breaches of the house unto the carpenters and builders and masons and to buy timber and hewn stones to repair the house. Howbeit, therefore, was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand, because they dealt faithfully. Now watch this in verse 8. And Hilkiah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. He says, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. Read on. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan and read it. Now, and read it. Now, when you read, some scholars will say it was the book of Deuteronomy. But this is around the time some of our forefathers now are finding some of these books, some of the books now. Now, go to Lamentations chapter 2, verse 9. Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 9. Lamentations 2 and 9. The book of Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 9. Her gates are sunken into the ground. He had destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Now, when the Babylonians came, what did the Babylonians do to Jerusalem? What did they do? They besieged it and burned and set the city on fire. We lost a lot of records. That's why Jeremiah said the law is no more. Now, go to 2 Ezra 13, verse 22 to 25. Now, this is during the time of Babylon. Now, we're going to jump during the time of Persia and Mede. We're going to come up. We're building up to the King James time period, but I want to show you during this time. Write these down. This is what happened. Multiple times we lose our records. 2 Ezra 13, verse 22. 2 Ezra 13, verse 22. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 13, verse 22. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. He that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself. They that have been fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the Almighty. Known this, therefore, that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. 
This is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou sayest a man coming up from the midst of the sea. The same is he whom God the highest hath kept a great season. No, no, no. That's not what I want. I'm sorry. Second is just 14, verse 22. 14, 22. Because I'm like, what the hell are you reading? Second is 14, verse 22. This is when he's about to rewrite the scriptures. Mm -hmm. 14, start at 21 about the law. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 14, verse 21. Uh-huh. For the law is burnt. For thy law is burnt. Go ahead. Therefore no man knoweth the, king, the things that are done of thee, or the works that shall begin. Nobody knows the works that was done of thee in the past, or that shall begin. Read on. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, and I shall write all that have been done in the world since the beginning. Uh-huh which were written in the law, that men may find thy path, and that they which will live in the latter days may live. So Ezra is asking the angels, send the Holy Spirit in me so I could rewrite the history that we lost. Read on. And he answered me saying, go thy way, gather the people together, uh -huh. and say unto them that they seek thee not for 40 days. Read on. But look, thou prepare thee, Many box, box trees, and take with these Saray, debris. Saraya, Debriah, Debriah, Semalaya, Semalaya, Achanus, Achan and Asael. These five, which are ready to write swiftly. Go ahead. And come hither, and I shall light a candle of understanding in thy heart, which shall not be put out till the things be performed, which thou shalt begin to write now those are the team of brothers that was going to be with esdras to rewrite history now watch this now jump to verse 36 verse 36 let no man therefore come unto me now nor seek after me these 40 days uh-huh so i took the five men as he commanded me and we went into the field and remained there and the next day, behold, a voice called me, saying, Ezra, open thy mouth and drink that I give thee to drink. Then open I my mouth, and behold, he reached me a full cup, which was full of it, wherewith water, but the color of it was like fire. And I took it and drank. And when I had drunk of it, my heart uttered understanding. So when he took this fire and drank it, it said his spirit uttered understanding. Now watch this. Read on. In my understanding, and my wisdom grew. And in my wisdom breast. grew. And wisdom grew in my breast, for my, for my spirit strengthened my memory, and my mouth was open and shut no more. Come on. The highest gave understanding unto the five men, and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told which they knew not. Come on. And they sat 40 days, and they wrote in the day, and at night, they ate bread. Now watch this, brothers. Keep going. As for me, I spake in the day, and I held not my tongue by night. Now look at this verse 44. Read. In 40 days, they wrote 204 books. So now what time period are we in? What time period are we in right now? Who said Greek? Well, you've been here for four months. I understand. I understand. Persian meat. Exactly. Who said Greek then? Yeah, brother, looking back now. All right. But no, no, no. This is the Persian me captivity. How many books do we have now? Who's, you said 44. We have way, 64. We got way more than 64. 80. We got 80. 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New, 14 in the Apocrypha. This is the Persian me time period. They wrote 204 books. We're not even talking about the Greeks, the Romans. This is the this is a, there's a lot of history we lost. That's why the scripture says, but that which you have, hold fast till I come. What we have that's most important is the law. But there's a lot of history we lost because of the fire that was set during the time of Babylon, during the wars that was going on. We lost a lot of records. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's your question? Use this break to get your spirit together. <laughs> Mr. Master's degree here. What the hell is this? Shalom, Captain Musa yeah. Christ. Yes. Is this where they got the uh, idea for the book of Eli? 
The bookie, I have no idea. Above my understanding, I don't know. I don't know. But 204 books is written. 204 books is written during this time. Now watch this. Keep reading. Verse 45. And it came to pass when the 40 days were fulfilled that the highest spake, saying, the first that thou hast written, publish openly that the worthy and the unworthy may read it. So there are certain things when we read the Bible, the worthy and unworthy may read it. Easy to understand, like the law, thou shalt not kill. Plainly written. Easy to understand. When you read the Bible, there are things that anybody could read and understand. But, read on. But keep the 70 last, that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. Right. So there's some things written in the scriptures that are hard, that are parables. Think about it. The bishop just did the breakdown of Revelation last year. No Christian pastor you will ever see doing that. Ever. None. Esau makes attempts. But you've never seen Esau break down the whole book of Revelation. And damn sure not no black Christian pastor. They look for scriptures on money. So it goes to show you the Holy Spirit is here with the Israelites at IUIC. This is where it is. This is where the understanding is coming out. Now watch this now. Go to 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 54 to 56. This is now during the Greek time period. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 54 to 56. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1 and verse 54. Now the 15th day of the month of Kaslu, in the 145th year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and build idol altars throughout the cities of Judah and on every side. Go ahead. And burnt incense at the doors of their houses and in the streets. Now watch this, verse 56. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law, which they found, they burnt them with fire. So even in the Greek time period, the white man burned our records. Now go to Luke 21, verse 25. This is during the time of Rome. Luke 21 and verse 25. Luke 21, 25. The book of Luke, chapter 21. And 21, verse, start at verse 24. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Who would fall by the edge of the sword, brothers? Israelites, go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And the Israelites will be led away as slaves into all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. So right now, who's dwelling in the land of Jerusalem? The Gentiles, come on. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. This is, this right here is our journey into Africa. This right here is our journey into the neighboring countries. The Bible's telling us in Luke 21, 24, the Israelites would not be in their homeland. The Gentiles would be in the land of Israel. So now, let's go to Psalm 68 and 11. So now we got links and pictures. Links, go to Psalm 68 and 11. You got it ready, right, O.C. Lyle? Because uh, Benjamin over here just did a horrible job reading. I just skipped a whole bunch of scriptures. Psalm 68, verse 11. Read this. The book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 11. Come on. The Lord gave the word. Uh-huh. Great was the company of those that published it. So the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of men that published the writing. Who were some men that published the writings? Micah, Ezekiel. Daniel, Nahum, Habakkuk, Jeremiah. Great was the company of men that published it. So was the Bible written by man? Yes, it was written by man. It was written by holy men. So now, first link. This is what we're going to do. Go to the first link, King James Version. That first link on there is King James Version. Yes. Yes. Go scroll down. Eli Ovs Eli, scroll down. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. Let's start at the second paragraph. Can you read this? Okay. It was first printed by John Norton and Robert Bart Baker. Both Bar the Barker. Barker. Both the King's printer 
and was the third translation into English approved by the English church authorities. Right. Go ahead. The first been the great. The first had been. The first had been the great Bible commission in the reign of King Henry the Eighth. 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 All right. That one I'm going to let you pass. We don't all know Roman numeral. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the great Bible had been commissioned by King Henry the Eighth. This now, when you read in the Zonovan Bible Dictionary, when you go to Bible, it will give you a history of when the Bible, how many times the Bible has been translated. Remember, during this time period, our forefathers learned English, learned English, not the English from 125th Street, the Queen's English. Now, King Henry VIII commissioned to have the Bible translated as well. Give me the picture of King Henry VIII, those pictures. King Henry VIII. Now, this is not the King James Version. He had the Great Bible Commission. Read, uh, put this up. I want to show you that our forefathers, remember, this is during the time of the Dark Ages. But now, remember, this. see that date, 15, 1535. Remember, Esau came back into power 1453. But it took time to reconquer all of Europe. 1453 is the fall of Constantinople, all right? Today, that's uh, Istanbul in Turkey. That was the fall. That, that was the major, that was the capital of the Byzantine Empire, Constantinople. They took that down. Now it took time for Esau to conquer the other country, Spain, Portugal. So even though Esau is beginning to come, remember Renaissance means what, brothers? Rebirth. Even though 1453 is the rebirth of the white man taking over, he did not conquer all the countries right away. It took time. So you still have parts of the world during the Dark Ages where we're ruling. So, for example, in Great Britain. Now, you see that top left right there? Zoom in on the top left. If you, can you zoom it? Yes. King Henry VIII. This is the black man that had the Bible. All right, you got oh, yeah, right, right. This is who he. This is who had the Bible translated, the Great Bible. You see right there to the right. You see the the crown. Go to the right, Eliel, Queen Elizabeth the first. Now today, isn't it? What, what's it? That's Queen Elizabeth, the Edomite, Queen Elizabeth. But today you have an Edomite saying Queen Elizabeth. This is Queen Elizabeth. Zoom out, zoom out. These are the Moors. These are the Moors. This is why black people, this is why black people don't know what to read. And that is the chancellor, Sir William Thomas. I forgot his name. It's right there on the bottom. Scroll down, scroll down. These are the Moors. Yes, right there. Chancellor of, uh, right there. Sir Thomas Moore, Chancellor of King Henry VIII. Now go to the next pictures. Go to the next pictures. All the pictures, I posted all of them right there for you. Now, during this time period, look at the date, scroll up. 1536, I believe that says. Wolfgang Grunenstein. Frostock. Compton. 1536 to 1557. These are German names. Scroll down. This is when black people were ruling the earth. Look at this. Come down, come down, come down. German family. Come down to the next picture. Come to the next picture. Central Europe. Noble families. See, a lot of times in school, what they focus on is we only come from Africa. No. We were in Europe. We were in Germany. Watch, I got another picture. Hold on, show the other picture. We were in Holland. Where's the other picture? See, I can't even pronounce that name. Which one of y'all brothers is from Germany know how to pronounce this? Garv Korotsky. I know Dirk Nowitzki. But uh, that, B Bobis Zipfaya. These are not names we are used to. But it shows you we were all over the world. Do I have another picture? 
Okay, that's the one. Okay, okay, okay. I, I know there's another. I probably just didn't send it to you. There's another one where I have on the bottom. It shows Holland. So, remember, King Henry VIII commissioned the Great Bible. This is before King James commissioned the King James translation now. Go to uh, the next link. Go to the next link. Yes. Yes. So now scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down all the way. All the way. It's, it's pretty low. It's pretty low. I'm going to show you which paragraph it is. Come down. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Come down, come down. Come down. Right here. OK, right here. I, I, I got this. I got this. Come down. Okay, as Hebrew, this is a paragraph we're reading, as Hebrew and Greek, the original languages of the Bible, like all languages, have some idioms and concepts not easily translated. There is, in some cases, an ongoing critical tension about whether it is better to give a word-for-word -word translation or to give a translation that gives a parallel idiom in the target language. Like when we're in the street and we ask a Christian, hey, get your Bible. Sometimes they'll have the uh, NIV, they'll have the Zondervan Study Bible, they won't have the King James Version. Watch this now. It says, uh, for instance, in the Dewey Rhymes Bible, I probably butchered that, Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition, New American Bible Rever Revised Edition, which is the English language Catholic translations, as well as Protestant translations like King James Bible, the Darby Bible, the Recovery Version, the Literal Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version, the Modern Literal, the Modern Literal Version, and the New American Standard Bible. Look at this. Are seen as a are seen as more literal translations or word for word. Look at this now. Come down. Whereas translations like the New International Version. And New Living Translation sometimes attempt to give relevant parallel idioms. Now, next link. Here's the next link. Now, watch this. The New International Version. How many of y'all have ever read this version at all? Like, some scriptures in it. Okay. So, some. Watch this. Or watch this. Watch what happens in the video. So, now, this is what I want is the second paragraph. Scroll down. Obviously, Eli L. This, this goes to show you we are at war. A team of 15 biblical scholars representing a variety of evangelical dominations, denominations worked from the oldest copies of reliable texts variously written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Notice what we just read. A team of 15 biblical scholars representing a variety of evangelical denominations. So now go to the video. What is the greatest challenge? That video right there. What is the greatest challenge? Yes. Go to four minutes. Now, this guy is Dr. Bill Mounts. He was on the team that helped I'm translate the knowledge. NIV. Watch what he says. This goes to show you this was the minds of the people that were on the board translating the Bible. Read this. Pause play. I walked into my daughter's room when she was eight years old. Uh, Kirsten had photocopied a page from her Bible, crossed out the word he and wrote in she, and then pinned it to her bulletin board in order to memorize it. After complimenting her on her desire to memorize the Bible, well, I asked why she made the change. <laughs> She just responded, well, the Bible's for me too, isn't it, Dad? Not just Tyler and Hayden. <laughs> With no outside influence, she understood he as male, referring to her two brothers. And she thought it wouldn't apply to her unless it said she. As we try to make the gender language as accurate as possible, it is rewarding to see more people willing to read the Bible and understand that its message is for all people. Pause, men pause, and women, pause. Boys and girls. Pause. Stop. This is the type of thinking that was on the board that helped translate the NIV. This has this is what we got to realize. We're going to go to how they translated the King James Version. We're going to go to that. But 
This is the mindset that was on. Remember, now, when you're on a board, remember, there's debates. There's, think. well, what do you think about this scripture? Well, I don't know about this. Well, what do you think about this? Well, no, because you got to remember, Paul was speaking to everybody, so he couldn't meet. This was the thinking on NIV. We're going to show you what they did. Oh, you're going to see. Rewind. Go ahead. You got a question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Give him the mic. Give him the mic. Quick, Joe. Well, um, Shalom. Um, shalom. Most like Christ. But what's your name again? Give us your name so everybody know who you are. We know. We are. Joshua, Joshua. Joshua. What tribe you from? Ephraim. Ephraim. You changed your name? Hell no. <laughs> we know you change it all right but go ahead go ahead <laughs> no what i'm saying though with the niv i mean it's when you read uh deuteronomy 28 the 68 verse in that book you can see it's kind of uh, ludicrous yes what they say with the we offer ourselves as, right you know what I'm saying? now so, now sometimes in the niv you'll see us make cross references with the law with certain scriptures the point is there are certain scriptures they completely change Remember, they can't change everything. They got, they got to be slick. And we're going to show you what scriptures they use. Because some Christians, when you're out there, Christians may say, well, I want to use my Bible. Prove to me your point out of my Bible. We have to know. We have to be versed in the NIV. Or whatever, they, whatever Bible you want, you're going to get it. That's it. It don't matter. Now, look. Rewind just a little. Just go back maybe 15 seconds. Obviously, Eli. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Press play again. Yes, sir. Boys and girls. Other times in translation work, the challenges are and lack look. Remember of the title of this video. Now he, this man, Doctor Bill Mounts, the devil. He was on the committee for the the ESV. I forgot what that one stands again. Yes. English standard. English standard. I think he said the ESV. He was on the committees of two translations. We just dealing with the NIV. He was on a committee. Remember, they said fifteen. A team of 15 people, they call them the CBT. Press play. Watch what he says again. We got to hear it again. Your language as accurate as possible. It is rewarding to see more people willing to read the Bible and understand that its message is for all people, men and women, boys and girls. Pause it. So now, keep that, keep that thinking. Keep that thinking. A team of 15 biblical scholars. Okay. So now. Uh, we did the Wikipedia links with that. Okay, now go to Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. We're going to go to Bible. We're going to go to the King James Version. And then we're going to go back to the NIV. So now what we're about to do is we're going to go from NIV, KJV. NIV, KJV. Now let's read what King James did when he had the translate the uh, Bible translated for his version. We will meet people in the street that say King James wrote the Bible. Let's see if that's true. Read this right here. This is the Compact Bible Dictionary, Zonovan Bible Dictionary. So it says, King James Version. When Elizabeth died in 1603, the crown passed to James I, who had been king of Scotland for 37 years. As James, several months after he ascended the throne of England, he authorized a new translation of the Bible to replace the Bishop's Bible. Sent it to you on the thing. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day were divided into six groups. So King James got 47 of the what? Best Hebrew and Greek scholars throughout Europe. 47. And damn well, a lot of them were black men. Black men on that committee. Remember, he was still ruling. These are black men on this committee. He got 47 of the best. Come on. Three for the Old Testament, uh -huh. two for the New, uh -huh. and one for the Apocrypha. So one for the Apocrypha, three for the Old Testament, two for the uh, New. Come on. Two of the groups met at Oxford, two at Cambridge, and two at Westminster. We, Oxford, Cambridge, these are top-ranking universities. We, we can't even think about going to Oxford or Cambridge. You got to be on another level. You have to be educated. Remember, these were 47 of the best. They were well-versed in languages, in linguistics. They understood languages. Come on. When a group had completed its task, a work was submitted to 12 men. So after they finished, it was then submitted to another team of 12 men to uh, uh, make sure their translation was accurate. Come on. Two from each panel. Uh-huh. Final differences of opinion were settled at a general meeting 
of each company. Come on. In cases of special difficulty, learned men outside the board of revisers were consulted. Come on. Marginal notes were used only to explain Hebrew and Greek words uh -huh. to draw attention to a parable parallel passages right now sometimes in the bible you'll see marginal notes in the middle like in acts 27 where we read where it says the fast was on the seventh day seventh month tenth day of the seventh month you'll see these things in the marginal notes in some bibles if you have the king james version with the apocrypha or it may be in some other versions come on keep reading intellects were you intellects inter intellects italics Ita oh yeah. italics were used for words not found in the original, but necessary to complete the sense. But necessary to complete the sense. Now watch this. Okay. Go to, obviously loud, this is what you're going to do now. Um, go to, on Google, the NIV Bible. I don't want to take snapshots. I want you all to see we're going to go to the NIV Bible. For the people online, we're going to go to the New International Version Bible now. And we'll, remember, before King James Version, there are... Plenty of versions, plenty of ver the Geneva Bible. That's plenty of versions. But now we're going to show you what Esau does. We are at war. Go to, here's the comparisons now. Get ready for these scriptures. We're going to go to Job 30 and 30. Job 30 and 30. We're going to go to New International Version, Job 30 and 30. And I'm going to show you something. Oh, I'm going to show you something. Hold on. You got it? Job 30 and 30. Okay. Job 30 and 30. Now, NIV, I believe the date was 1978 or 1973. I think so. It was when the NIV came out. Now, okay. Job 30 and 30. You got Job 30 and 30? Yeah. Okay. Let's read that. The book of Job, chapter 30, verse 30. Hold on. 1978, NIV. And then they had a more popular version that came out in 1983, I believe. Now, watch this. Here it is. Job chapter 30, verse 30. Yes. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. That's the King James Version. But now, when the NIV panel of 15 biblical scholars, which are morons, when they got together, they said, read this now. My skin grows black and peels. My body burns with fever. They changed it. They changed. But think about it. These are scholars. When they sat there, they, they think about it. Remember, differences of opinion. Well, d d it, is Job really saying he's a black man? No, I don't think. No, he's not saying that, of course. Job, he wasn't a black man. So he's more so focusing on his disease. So I think we need to change the language. And let's say my skin grows black. Because, of course, he could not have been referring to color. You, you, you all agree? We all agree? Yes, we agree. Change. Change. This is what they did. This is what they did. Okay, so now, when we're teaching and the Christian pulls out his NIV, he says, wait, but remember, we're in a different time period. So this is proof. My Bible says it grows black. You got to remember, you're using a KJV. That's older English. I still don't believe we're black in the Bible. That don't make any sense. This is the war that we're at. This is the kind of war we're dealing with. Now, you got to say, okay, all right, all right, Christian, you got the NIV. All right, hold on, Christian. Go to Jeremiah 8.21. I'm going to show you now. Let's go to Jeremiah 8.21, Officer Eliel. Because some Christians will do it. They will buy the NIV because it's easier to read. And you already heard the frame of mind with Dr. Bill Mounts. He said, because the message is for all people. That's what all of them had in their mind. It's for all people. Jeremiah 821. Read this King James Version. When black people were still ruling, when 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars were taken to translate, and it don't even matter. They understood language. Look what they did. Read the this. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 8 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, am I hurt? Uh-huh. 
I am black. What did Jeremiah say? 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 I am black. Read it again because I don't think we understand what it's saying. For the hurt of the daughter of my people uh -huh. am I hurt. Uh -huh. I am black. Uh -huh. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. I am black. Let's go to the NIV. When the team of 15 biblical scholars from ver a variety of of evangelical denominations. This is what they came up with. Read this. Since my people are crushed, I am crushed. I mourn and horror grips me. These are scholars. Scholars. We're at war. We are at war. They got paid to do this. And it was approved by Zondervan Publishing Company. Since my people are crushed, I am crushed. I mourn and hard grips me. Now, when we're in the street speaking, the Christian's is going to say, I still don't understand how you're saying we're blacks and we're the Israelites. My Bible does not say that. Now, we could say, look, you got to, some of us may say, look, you, you got to get the King James Version. Or we could prove black people out the NIV. Or we're going to do that. We're going to do that. But let's give the Christian, man, you're going to be the Christian. You're reading like a Christian. <laughs> You're going to be the Christian. Now, let's go to Jeremiah 14.2. Jeremiah 14.2. Jeremiah 14.2. The Christian, like Captain Barnabas was teaching his brother in Yonkers. He said, I've been searching for God. I've been searching for God, and um, I found him. I found a religion. I think it was non-denominational. And he had, it wasn't NIV. It, it was, wait, maybe it was NIV. It might have been. You wasn't there. What the hell is this? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking to him, like, wait, wait, was it IV? You're like, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> he had another version of the Bible, but it was different. So when we were reading to him, we had to, it, it was, we had to stay in his Bible. But we used the comparison. We read from the KJV and his. And he was like, yo, wait, I never knew this. All praise to the Most High Spirit was opening up, but you may meet that hard-headed Christian and say, look, stay in my Bible. Prove your point out of my Bible. So let's read Jeremiah 14, 2. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Come on. Judah mourneth. Judah mourneth. Come on. And the gates thereof language. Come on. They are black. What color is Judah? They are black. What color is Judah? They are black. What color is Judah? They are black. Come on. Unto the ground. Unto the ground. Showing you the ground is in comparison to the color black. So what color was Adam? Black. Come on. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. Uh-huh. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. Is that it? Verse, okay. So now, let's go to the New International Version. Judah mourns her cities languish. They wail for the land, and their cry goes up from Jerusalem. What happened? They took it out. They took it out. This is a team of 15 biblical scholars. We will never let the so-called white men take up mm -mm. oh no we gotta blast the hell out of christianity this is demonic this is demonic think about it. this shows you they are well aware of what they're doing they're well why because of the work that we're doing people will really believe wait these israelites are making sense so what does esau have to do remember we're at war what's going on now voting you have some of our people that say, look, voting is the answer. There's the answer. Some of our people say, no, religion is the answer. Join mine. Some of our people say, education is the answer. Get as many degrees as possible. Of course you want to get degrees. You want to become successful, whatever your craft or trade is in. But education teaches us that we are African Americans. We are, you, you understand the point. So now, with religion, here they took black out a team of 15 biblical scholars so-called scholars right let's go to lamentations chapter 5 and verse 10 this is in the niv lamentations chapter 5 verse 10 The book of Lamentation, chapter 5 and verse 10. Right. 
Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. The condition during this time was terrible because of Nebuchadnezzar when they burned down the city. And it's letting you know the identity of the Israelites. And remember, yes, this is old English, but it lets you know their color, their color. The NIV said, our skin is hot as an oven, feverish from hunger. They took black out. They took black out. And you got to think about it. The higher you get, whatever it is, let's, let's look at different trades in the world. When we're in, we in New York City, all right, we got this beautiful weather outside, 30 degrees this morning, all right? You know I have my window open. This, oh, this is the weather we like. When we in New York City and you see the different trades, I always make this analogy. You got FDNY. You got uh, LIRR. You got a lot of city agencies. The higher you get up in position, the skin complexion changes. The skin complexion changes. Remember, Esau knows now it's different. Now they have to be a little more crafty. Remember, affirmative action. They are required by law to hire a certain amount of minorities. That And included in that is not just African-Americans. It's Asians. It's white women. Oh, right, 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 white women. It's um, Arab. Anybody from another? There's, now, in there, you, know, you see a sprinkle of black. You see Jesus in there. You see, um, um, uh, what was the Arab name? Muhammad, right, right. Muhammad in there. Muhammad, yeah, you're right, Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad is in there. And they are required by law to hire X amount. But the higher you get, when you look at, look at the board of the MTA, the board of the MTA, mostly Caucasians. You'll see about, uh, let's say, I think the board of the MTA probably be about, maybe about 25 to 30. You'll see maybe about four or five blacks, maybe four, maybe two. They probably might have changed it now when I was looking at the board of MTA. But FDNY, go high up in there. Look at the NFL, the owners of the leagues, all Caucasian. I can't even say one, all Caucasian. Um, Stephen A. Smith, he made a point. Everybody got mad at him. They hired, what's his name, Steve Nash to be the coach of a Brooklyn Nets. Stephen A. Smith mentioned he said this is white supremacy because clearly you have another coach a basketball coach I think he mentioned Derek Fisher I think more experience in basketball and they don't even offer him the position but they offer a Caucasian zero experience he gets the job and you see that a lot on the job force I remember my co-worker told me he said this is, this is when, I was, uh, when I was a teacher assistant in the school working with um, special ed kids, working with special ed kids. So he, here we, we pulled up the newspaper. You know the fiscal year when they show you um, how much is just they, you they show you how much is your school district going to receive. So when I was in the school, he said, he said, he took the newspaper. He said, yo, he said, yo, Israel, read that. So I'm reading. I was like, okay, so this school district is going to get 1 million, 2 million, 12, 14. So I was like, oh, I said, I said, all right. He said, he said, you don't know what you're reading. I was like, no, I said, I don't get it. He said, Israel, look, look, look. So I'm like, I was like, I said, all right, okay. I said, yo, we're, we're getting more money. He was like, oh, God. He said, look, he said, okay, look at where the money's going. So I'm looking at the school districts. So some of these school districts in New York State, they get these big budgets because guess what? In some of these school districts, in a middle school, they have advanced English, advanced Spanish. They have the tech pro, the technology department in the school district is getting $1 million. But another black school is just getting $1 million. Remember, another school just got $1 million for the technology department. But a school where it's more so our students got $1 million complete for everything. And then 600000 of that went to the sports department. You understand? So he was showing me. He said, look. He said, look at the budgets. He said, bro, white supremacy is even here. I was like, damn. One million for the tech department. One million for the language department. Uh, Two million for the sports department for this Caucasian school district. And then when you look at there, they have better programs, better.
better textbooks, better technology, all that. Why? Give them the best. Make sure they have the best experience in education so they be can become the best at their craft. Whereas in our school districts, lower budgets, lower budgets. Here's another thing they do. Dag, I know we digress for a minute, but look, here's another thing that they do. This is what they did when we, we were reading the newspaper. In black school, okay, in the school, in the school system, a lot of our students are in special ed. This is what I, remember, they're not literally, retar okay, some are literally slower. Some literally have a, uh, um, uh, a learning disability. Some, not all, not all. So now, in our school districts, you'll see a Caucasian teacher teaching our kids. She can't control them. For whatever, one, she can't relate to them. Two, she's just frustrated. He's a kid. He's want to run around. So the teachers will call the parents in and say, hey, um, you know, we think your son. He's great. He's great, by the way. He's great. He's so lovely. But we think he should, maybe we should consider placing him into a, a smaller classroom. Because special ed have three different classrooms. They have, um, what's the one over there? What was it called? Hold on. Inclusion. You got inclusion where you put 15 students that have a rec that have no learning disability. Then you take 15 special ed students in that same classroom, hoping that they will aspire to learn like the other students. Then you have the second learning disability called self-contained. Then you have you may have a classroom of 20. All of them have something going on. All of them may be on some type of prescription, Ritalin or whatever it is. So now in there, you'll see. Yeah, I almost forgot my point. Hold on. Okay. So now in self-contained, the, te the, the teachers will push. They say, hey, but you know what? Your son, he's a little more active. Have you ever tried considering some medication? I think that some parents, guess what? Working two jobs. Some parents just don't give a damn. Some parents not paying attention. Okay, yeah, whatever works. Because they truly believe the school system loves their child. So then you sign the paper, and guess what? Now he gets an IEP. And then guess what? Now your student is in a special ed classroom. He really doesn't belong in there, but because he was too active in class, now he's in a special ed classroom. Now they're giving him drugs. Now this is the point now. Black school districts get more money for special ed programs. So that way, guess what? The school system can give more, can place more black students in that program. Why? Because they have a, a larger budget for that. Whereas a white school district probably will only receive X amount of dollars to place some students in a special ed program. It's crafty counsel. It's crafty counsel. I didn't, because once the, once, once you place a child in a special ed program, once you place them in there, remember, the school gets money for that. The school gets money because now they have to pay X amount of dollars to take care of this child because now we got to pay for drugs, whatever it is. It's wicked as hell. It's wicked as hell. This whole system is white supremacy. When he showed me that, I was like, Dad, you can't escape it. You cannot escape it. It's in the school system. It's in the criminal justice system. It's in the FDNY. All, of, all, of, all these departments, the higher you go, the complexion changes. So now we're dealing with religion. We're dealing with religion. This board of 15 biblical scholars changed black. They said, take it out. They said, take it out. Because it could not be referring to him as a black man. The Israelites as black people. Let's go to Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8. The book of Lamentation, chapter 4 and verse 8. Yes. Their visage is blacker than a coal. What does visage mean, brothers? Face, the face. Write that down. So this visage, facial appearance, it said is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. They black, black. Now, let's go to the NIV, Officer Eliel. NIV. Let's go to the NIV. 
NIV. Oh, yeah, get ready to vomit. That's right. Get the maintenance crew ready. Get the team ready. Get the mob. Get the bucket. Read this. But now they are blacker than soup. They are not recognized in the streets. Hmm. Their skin has shriveled on their bones. It has become as dry as a stick. But now they are blacker than soup. So guess what the team of biblical scholars say? They'll say, right, because disease, just like Job referenced, this is all disease, sickness. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to show you something now. So let's say we're dealing with this Christian NIV. He says, can you show me in the NIV that these Israelites, the Israelites, they are black people? Can, no, don't go to the KJV. Can you stay in my version? Because the Bible is the Bible, right? Can you stay in my version and prove it to me? Okay, so this is what we do. Let's go to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2, verse 17. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna stay in your version. Exodus 2, 17. Now go to Exodus 2, 17. I, I know we got you all over the place. You got to load it up. Then IV. Go to here. All right. You're getting half a break today. Exodus 2, 17. We're going to read verse 17 to 19. You got this in KJV. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 17. Uh-huh. And the shepherds came and drove them away. Both Moses stood up and helped them uh -huh. and watered their flock. Uh -huh. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they, and they said, An Egyptian delivered us. So now, now, history. What color the ancient Egyptians? Black. NIV. Let me get both verses, um, over Lyle. You probably got to put the dad, yeah. Okay, so now, some shepherds came along and drove them away, but Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. When the girls returned to Ruel, their father, he asked them, why have you returned so early today? They answered, an Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. You can't change that. The ancient Egyptians are black. You're staying in the NIV. Now, now you got one on them, but they're still not convinced. Remember, we, we got to be able... There's nothing, whatever Bible you want to use, the point is still going to come out. God is only dealing with the Israelites. The point's going to come out. We just got to be studied. We got to study these things. So now, let's go to Exodus chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Same thing uh, there, obviously, Eli. Exodus chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Go ahead, read this in the KJV. Go ahead. The book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. Uh -huh. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Uh -huh. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Then the Lord said, put your hand inside your cloak so Moses put his hand into his cloak and when he took it out the skin was leprous it had become as white as snow if he was Caucasian how could his skin ref how could his skin change obviously he could not be Caucasian it became white now you got one on him oh now we got one on him now that's two now they stumbling now we got oh we got to go for a knockout we got to keep we, we can't show mercy to Christians we cannot show mercy. Go to Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 9. We're going to get right to the point. Verse 9. The book of Numbers chapter 12 and verse 9. Uh -huh. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became 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 leprous, white as snow. Uh huh. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. So now, same thing right here. The anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left them. When the cloud lifted up from above the tent, Miriam's skin was leprous. It became as white as snow. Once again. This proves she was not Caucasian. She was not Caucasian. Now, let's go to Acts 13, verse 1. 
Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. The book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 1. Uh-huh. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch uh-huh. certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucia of Cyrene. That was called nigger. Nigger. That's what it was called. Nigger. Now Esau will say Niger. 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 <laughs> yeah. To change it. Think about it, just that one change. When you hear nigger, you eyes open. But when you hear Niger, it change it. Oh, oh no, nah, he didn't mean nigger. Just like that. Just like that. Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called nigger. What does that mean, Christian? Black. You're forcing them to think. That's how you get the Christian. Force them to think. That's how you get them. That's how you get them. Now, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 9. NIV. Ezekiel chapter 1. But put this, Officer Elio, 9 to 13. 9 to 13. Let's go to KJV where we at. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 9 to 13. The book of Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 9. Sorry, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 7. 7 to 13. I wrote the wrong one down. Verse 7. And their feet were straight feet. This is talking about the angels of God. Come on. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. Uh Uh-huh. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. They sparkled like the color, color of burnished brass. But now when you go to Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 9 in NIV, 1 and 7, it says their legs were straight. Their feet were like those of a calf and gleamed like burnished bronze what what What? niggas don't know what gleam means black people don't know what gleam gleamed you change that's how they twist scripture gleamed like burnished brass now think about on this committee no i don't it couldn't be color because with god there is no color god is everything boom just like that so let's change color kjv says color But today's thinking, we need more of a multicultural thinking because God is everything. We are all one. Let's change color. Now, let's go to verse 13. Here's where you get them. Verse 13, read that. Verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures. So burning coals, what color is that? Black. Verse 13 right in here. The appearance of the living creatures was like burning coals of fire. You can't do that one. Oh, no, we got you. Burning coals. You got to stress. That's how you get the Christian. What are coals? What color is that? Think, nigga. That's what you got to do. That's how you get them. That's how you get them. So now, this is what we do now. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go back. We're going to go to the video. We're going to take a break. We're going to give the Christian a break. Now he's dazzling. He's about to pass out. You got to hold. Hold on, Christian. Wait. Don't fall on me. Hold on. I got you. Hold on. So now, play the video. I think I sent this to you, Officer Eliel. Uh, Yes. No, 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 no. Not that one. We're going to get that a little later. That one's talking about deacons. We're going to show how they change that one. Not that one. I didn't send it to you. Hold on, hold on. We're going to play this. We're going to play this. Hold on, Eliel. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to play. We're going to play. This right here. Officer Eli, this right here. Okay. Online request. Okay, I just sent it to you. This is about think tanks. But we just want one point with think tanks. Think tanks. Remember, think tanks want to shape the thinking of people. There's multiple think tanks, private organizations, private companies that are think tanks. Now watch what they say here. It's not we're not gonna play the whole video, it's like a couple seconds. Watch this.
Think tanks are independent policy research organizations that generate evidence Pause it. analysis and Play it again. Turn it up, uh Ops Gabriel. Go ahead. Think tanks are independent policy research organizations that generate evidence, analysis, and data for use in public policy processes. And they do that in lots of different ways. They do it by conducting research themselves. They do it by collecting data and analysis and often making sense of it. And they do that by engaging with different actors in society. So think tanks could be in form of advocacy institutions in the sense that they campaign for a movement, they campaign for an idea, or Boss. it could be just research. They campaign for a movement or they campaign for an idea. Now think about it. When we meet most people, think about this. I want you to think about this. When we meet people that may have moved into a different neighborhood, right? What are the odds? A lot of people that we meet, they say, hey, I like the neighborhood that I live in because, you know, I got Chinese neighbor, black neighbor. I got everybody there. A lot of people say the same thing. Why? Because they say, yo, I moved into a neighborhood, just black people. You don't want to come off like a racist or like you don't care. That's what people say. Listen to me. Oh, yeah, this neighborhood that I live in. Yeah, because I, I, I like the fact that my neighbors of every race, that multicultural thinking, that board, that committee of the NIV, that's their thinking. That's the, nope, nobody. They're not going to. No, no, no. Let's not put that there because black, no, it's it's deep in them where. No, it couldn't mean color. No, none of us are racist. We're not racist. But remember, the Bible is for all multicultural thinking. It's all white supremacy. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Watch this now. Watch this. Now, go to Psalms chapter 83, verse 1 to 4. Psalms 83, verse 1 to 4. Psalms 83, verse 1 to 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. The Bible says they are people, they are nations that hate God. Come on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Come on. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And have consulted against thy hidden ones. Come on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. When did that start? They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. When did that start? Slavery. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. That starts with slavery. When they destroyed our thinking. That starts, Psalm 83, 4, that starts with slavery. Come on. That the name of Israel. That the name of Israel. May be no more in remembrance. May be no more in remembrance. Now, go to Micah chapter 2. Micah chapter 2 and verse 1. Micah chapter 2, verse 1. Book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Woe to them that deviseth iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Uh -huh. When the morning is light, they practice it. They practice it. When were they able to practice the evil that they've been doing? Slavery. Come on. They practice it because it is in their power of their hand. Because it is in the power of their hand. Come on. And they covet fields. And take them by violence uh -huh. and houses and take them away. Uh -huh. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. This is, once again, the white man. This is the white man right in the Bible. It said that they are able to practice it. Just like gynecology, they were able to practice that. Practice the evil on studying the black woman. Practice the evil. Have you ever seen video? What's his name again? 
type and father of gynecology. His name just J. Marion Sims. J. Marion Sims studied black women, studied their vagina. And guess what? He did not give black women any anesthesia so that they were able to practice it. And that's where, that's what, think about a lot of the medicine, the understanding that they have in medicine is because they were able to practice it in slavery. This scripture can go on many different directions. And remember, they just took his statue out maybe about, I think a year ago, maybe two years ago. They put it in the cemetery. They didn't destroy it. They just put it in the cemetery. They put it in the back. They took it away from the front. They just put it in the back. So now go to Psalms chapter 50 and verse 16. Psalms 50 and verse 16. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 16. For unto the wicked, God saith, uh -huh. what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Uh -huh. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Come on. Seeing thou, hast instruct seeing, seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind thee. Seeing thou hatest instruction and cast my word behind thee. This is what Esau did. This said, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Take my covenant in thy mouth. That's what the white man did. Get 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Officer Eliel, get the article on uh, the versions of the Bible, the different versions of the Bible. It talks about, the, I think, the top ten versions and their sales, I believe. Go ahead, read this. The book of Second Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all, that is called God, uh -huh. or that is worship, All right. so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Read it again. Who opposeth. And Who opposes God? The white man. Come on. And exalted himself above all that is called God. That's the white. That's not Kim Jong-un. That, that is not the North Korean president. This is the white man. Come on. Or that is worship, uh -huh. so that he as God, Esau, the Caucasian race, come on, sitteth in the temple of God, uh -huh. showing himself that he is God. He did this in 70 AD, Titus and Vespasian, but guess what he's doing it today? You type in Jesus Christ, you see the white man. You type in angels, you see the white man. You type in any figures during the Dark Ages, you see Caucasians. They changed history they've changed history so they thought so now go to yes that article pull up that article pull up that article yes the top 10 best-selling bible translations compared to 10 years ago so this is june 14 2020 go down go down go down go down Okay. Ranking as January 2020, numbers in parentheses are 2011 ranking. So this is from 2011. What's number one? The new international version. Perversion, right. Perv. You understand? So next is King James Version. That's been, that's been a popular version for years. Right after that, New Living Translation. Look, you got English Standard Version, New King James Version, but that's the point, the new international version. That's another way of how they at war with us. Push new versions of the Bible. Push new versions. So guess what? It's fine. We'll stay in your version. We could do that too. You want to come to the King James Version, which is better? We're going to do that too. Whatever it is, we're still going to prove to you you don't know a damn thing. That's the job. That's what we got to do in hopes to win them over to repent. That's the goal. That's the end goal, to get them to repent. Now, look at this now. Go to the next article, Top Seminary Schools. How many of y'all brothers in here wanted to be a Christian pastor? Be honest. 
Yeah. There we go. Wait, nah, you didn't want you wanted to be a Christian pastor for real? Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Samuel, you wanted to be a Christian pastor, did it you? Yeah, right. I know you did. <laughs> okay. Oh, your father. Your father. Right. So now look. This is top, I heard cemetery schools. The top schools of the dead. Top 10 evangelical seminaries in the U.S. Remember T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar. You see the bishop been on Creflo Dollar now. He was T.D. Jake, now you have Creflo Dollar. They, they all going to get it. We can't let them go. But look, the top 10 evangelical seminaries in the U.S. Now, remember Isaiah 29. It said they turned the world upside down. Remember, if you want to get a degree in theology, in knowing God, who do you go to? The white man. He's going to tell you about God. All of them branch from Christianity, all, uh, whether you're Baptist, Pentecostal, all of, them, all of them come from the Catholic Church. All of them agree Jesus Christ is what? Caucasian. So now, come down, come down. This is a ranking of the top 10 evangelical, evangelical seminaries in the U.S. Come down, come down, come down, come down. I'm just going to get to the point of the, of the schools. Dallas Theo Theolo Theolo Theological Seminary, Dallas, Texas. Come down. That's number one. Number two, the Fuller, the Fuller Theological Seminary, Pasadena, California. Come down. Biola. Come down. These are the top schools if you want to learn how to teach the Bible. Southern Baptist Seminary, Louisville, Kentucky. Come down. The Westminster. Come down. This is in Pennsylvania. Gordon Conwell Seminary in Hamilton, Massachusetts. Okay. And this is top dollar. The Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in Deerfield, Illinois. Okay, come on. Liberty. And that was the name of a slave ship. Some of the slave ships' names was Liberty. This is in Lynch, Lynchburg, Virginia. Damn! Lynchburg, Virginia. Now, there's a reason why we go into this article. Watch. Moody Theological Seminary and Graduate School, Chicago. And the Southern Evangelical Theological Seminary, Matthews, North Carolina. Okay, so now go all the way to the top, to the number one. Go all the way to the top, to number one. Yes, right there. So, okay, that one right there. Yes, Dallas Theological Seminary, Dallas, Texas, right? Okay. Go to the next article. The article. Okay, do this, do this, do this. I probably didn't see it. Copy this Dallas Theological Seminary and open up a Wikipedia off of this school. It's going to give you the date of when they established this school. This is if you want to learn about God. These are, these are top schools where some of these people come from that's on committees. Now, you're not necessarily be NIV, but these are top schools. It's, it's, uh, it is well respected if you come from one of these schools. Come down. It says, uh, come down, come down, come down. I just want the right. Okay. 1924, 1924, hmm, let's go to the history of the lynchings in Dallas, Texas, and let's look at the dates. The history of hangings and lynchings in Dallas County. According to a report published by the Equal Justice Initiative, the legacy of racial terror and lynching in America is a topic that is directly connected to the complex and ever-evolving systems of mass incarceration, ex excessive penal punishment, disproportionate sentencing of racial minorities, in other words, black people, and po police abuse of people of color. Come down, come down. Now, remember, when you, when you look at some of these top schools, seminary schools, when they started, a lot of them have similar dates, early 1900s. One of them was 1863. It says this same report lists 344 lynchings of African Americans occurred in Texas between the years of 1877 and 1950, with Anderson County ranking 13th with 22 victims on the top 25 list of counties in the most lynchings 
and most lynching victims. Come down. Look at these two Edomites. Guess what? Christians. They're Christians. They, they, oh, somebody's a Republican. One of them might be a Democrat. One of them might be independent or conservative, bipartisan. Come down, come down, come down. Watch, we're going to come down. We're going we're gonna to scroll down. Officer Eli L, scroll down. So we got 18 black males hanged and or lynched. Come down, come down. Watch now. We're going to look at the dates. Come down more. Remember, 1924 was the Dallas theolo- theolo- uh, Theology School. Come down. Okay, keep going, keep going. All right, go up, go up a little more, go up a little more. Down, down, that postcard right there. A postcard of the lynching of Allen Brooks on Main Street and Acard Street with a large crowd of onlookers. Guess what? A lot of those people in that crowd went to church on Sunday. Praise Jesus. White supremacy. Come down. Come down, come down. Okay, look at this brother right here. Come down. Julius B. Bubba Robertson inside a jail cell, jail cell. John Robertson was hanged for murder, assault, and robbery in Dallas County. A crowd of 600 gathered in the rain to watch his hanging on January 10th, 1913. Negro hanged for murder in Dallas. But now, here's the thing. Weren't we accused of a lot of crimes we did not commit? So we can't, or we can't, remember, the burning of the Black Wall Street. Caucasian women say, oh, he touched me inappropriately. Just lied. 1913, Dallas, Texas. Go back to that school right there, the Wikipedia link to the right. 1924, established by white supremacists. And a lot of them, guess what, were part of the KKK. This is the thing, and these are the people that taught Christian pastors, how to fear God. Go to, um, go to the next video. Type this in. Gil Noble. Type in Gil Noble on YouTube. Gil Noble me- Media. Type in Gil Noble Media. Yes. It should come up. Okay, right there. I love this video right here. Look at what he says now. Gil Noble, media images and information right here. Yes. Okay, go a little top. Right there. Now watch what he says. Now he's focusing on media. Press play. It affects and infects us and and what we think about what's going on, what we're told about what's going on around the world. Let me give you an example that will reinforce my answer. In every newsroom at the beginning of the day, there's a person who's called an assignment editor. They come in at sunup and they look at mail that has come in and they look at the uh, wire services and the internet and they look at the barrage of television screens and between that they begin to assemble the assignment schedule for the day what's going to be covered and who is going to cover it as the reporters come in I've been through this so when you show up for work your first stop is the assignment desk and they say Noble you're gonna go here This is who's going to be representing the mayor, and this is who you'll be talking to, that kind of stuff. Later on in the morning, the assignment editor meets with the producers and the writers, and they sit and they talk over an oval table about the assignments and what's going to be on the evening news. And they make their comments. Well, we're going to cover that story again. I mean, we've already given that story. No, no, let's let's move it down or let's shave it to just a, you know, a 30-second voiceover. Overwhelmingly, the people who make these decisions are neither black, nor brown, nor red, nor yellow. And they're talking about coverage of a world that is, for the most part, black, brown, red, and yellow. On a network level, it's even more severe because you have these news bureaus all around. And it's the same thing with the committees of these Bible translations. All Caucasian. All Caucasian. Now watch this. Go to that video. Um, The one that's 23 minutes, it's it's with the committee, all the Edomites on there on the panel. Right there, yes. 
Go to 23 minutes. This is the CBT. These, this is the committee that translated the NIV. Not all of them. Most of them. We got about seven devils. Involving. Now, watch what he says now. Now, watch what he says. Come a little before that. Come a little before that because he goes into it. Now, they, they, they are at a discussion, and the crowd is able to ask them questions on when they were translating the Bible, the NIV. Now, they're going to go to the scripture, Romans 16.1. All right, now press play. Verbal, then involving meaning, you have a tough choice the translator has to make. You keep the meaning that is going to make sense in both of those contexts and change the words you're using in English, or do you keep the same words in English at the possible expense of losing the natural meaning in one text or another? Mark, did you understand that? Good, thank you, Doug. Uh, we have three people no, no, first of all, well, first standing. Of all. I think in interest of time, these will have to be the last three. So I'm going to go back here into the center and then over to you, Sarah. Thanks. Uh, Christy Overton. I, so I know you're a committee. You disagree. Uh, I want to know about uh, a passage that was really hard for you to agree on. What was it? And what was that process like? Romans 16. Here it is. Uh, Romans 16, whether Phoebe Pause. was a... Romans 16, one. Let's get Romans 16, one. This was the debate. Here it is, how they changed understanding. Remember we read Isaiah 29, turn the world upside down. There was a major debate on Romans 16, one. Come back just a few seconds, obviously, Eli, when you can, so he could say it. The book of Romans, chapter 16 and verse 1. You went back a few seconds? Go ahead. Press play. That's like. Romans 16. Uh, Romans 16. Whether Phoebe was a no, no. deacon or a servant in Pause. the church. was probably That was the debate. Now let's read Romans 16, 1. The book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 1. I commanded unto I commanded. you. What? I commanded. What? I commend <laughs> unto you, Phoebe, our sister. I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centria, whatever, Centria, whatever, Centria, okay. Now, it says she's a servant. Phoebe was a faithful sister who helped Paul. They said they were debating, was she a servant or a deacon? How do you get deacon out of that? But think about it. What has already transpired in 1978? The woman's feminist movement. Now you can introduce a new thinking. Read it again, Romans 16.1. I commend it unto you, Phoebe. Our I commend. I commend. Unto, not commend it or command it. I commend. 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 Mm -hmm. Read it again. I commend. Unto you, Phoebe, right, our sister, come on, which is a servant of the church, uh huh, which is at Centra Centrea. Okay, go ahead. That you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, uh huh, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a successor, a succurer, been a succur of many and of myself also. So now let's go to First Timothy three. Remember, King James had 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars. When they were translating, they obviously understood right here, servant, assisting. That's definitely the trend. It's servant. Now, 1 Timothy 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. My bad. I meant 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 8. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 8. Likewise. Must the deacons be grave? They understood in this context translation, it is necessary to write deacons right under the bishop. But they understood in Romans 16, 1 with Phoebe, it didn't say she was a slave. It said she was a servant, meaning she helped the, the, uh, 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 the apostles. She is, and Paul said, you help her with whatever she needs. But now Esau is saying, mm, in an NIV, they wrote deacon. Get NIV, Romans 16.1. NIV, Romans 16.1.
This is what the NIV interpreted as. Romans 16, 1. Romans chapter 16, verse 1. So translations have changed. It's very important why we got the KJV. Oh, yeah. Romans 16, 1. I commend unto you our sister Phoebe, a deacon. Now, guess what? Go to 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Now you can change this. We can change this now. 1 Corinthians 14, 34. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14 and verse 34. Come on. Let your woman keep silent in the churches. But if a woman's a deacon, she has to. She's a, remember, a deacon is a position of power. Now you can introduce new thinking. Well, did Paul really mean that? Did he really mean that? Now you can introduce it. Oh, when we read this to sisters, what? Hold on. I can't say anything. I can't be over a congregation of men. What kind of, what kind of male chauvinistic thinking is that? No, no, no. That's not what Paul meant. This is how they twist scriptures. Now, go to the other video. It's the, hold on. I think it's the same one. Hold on. I sent it to you. It's the last link that I sent. The last link that I sent. Let me make sure. I think I sent you the right one. Last one. Yes. And then you're going to go to. You're going to go to five minutes. Yes. Five minutes. Christ's love for me. Because my. Okay. Okay. Go a little bef before. A little before. Yes. Yeah. Right there. People say Christ's love for me. And I'm really glad it's Christ's love for me. Because my love for Christ wanes. I'm a sinful human being. And good days and bad days, right? And if, if what really kept me from sinning was my love for him, I'm in real trouble. Pause. When you but watch this video, he's saying, I'm, in, in terms of translation, I'm glad. It, he said it was very important for us to translate me. And I'm glad it says that because of my love. This goes back to that thinking of, all races. It's for everybody. We want to translate the Bible to make it more meaningful to all races and nationalities. Go to that same video you played earlier. What is the greatest challenge? He's going to comment on Phoebe, Romans 16, 1. The same, what is the, no, 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 the one that says, what is the greatest challenge? The first video you played right here. Hold on, I'm going to post it back there again. And go to four minutes. Right there, go to four minutes. He's going to comment on Romans 16.1. Yeah, four minutes, right? Yeah, 351 is fine. That's fine. Yep. Dictionary that shows how English refers to all people regardless of gender. I'll never forget the time when I walked into my daughter's room when she was eight years old. Uh, Kirsten had photocopied sorry, sorry, a page sorry, hold on, hold on, from her Bible. My bad, my bad, my bad. Go to, it's one minute, 23 seconds. Try that. One minute, 23 seconds. Yeah, try that. Someone else. We hear things differently. But when the CBT has worked through a passage I and mean, we've come to a consensus, then piece by piece, how we express the meaning of a verse is becoming clearer and clearer to all of us. And that's why we do this. I'll never forget the discussion of the Greek word diakonos. Is Phoebe a servant or a deacon in her church? Reference in Romans 16.1. Well, the word deacon has a significantly different meaning in the northern part of the U.S. than in the south. Pause. In the north. Now it's changed to what it means in the south and what it means in the north. Come on, press play. The deacon is someone who has a regular ministry in the church. In the south, the deacons historically have run the church as the governing authority. So which role did Phoebe play? Was she a servant or the boss? Pause. They come, came to a conclusion. She was the boss. She was the boss. That was the conclusion they made. 
Now you can change 1 Corinthians 14, 34. You can change 1 Timothy 2, 11. Hell, let's, let's go for a home. Let's go for a home run. Let's change Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let's change that too. That's what this is all about. We at war. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Yes, right there. Yes, sir. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Meaning this war that we're fighting, it is not a physical war. It is not a war of physical weapons. The weapon that we're using is God's weapon, the Bible. Come on. But mighty through God. Come on. To the pulling down of strongholds. These are the strongholds that we are at war at. The strongholds that's in people's minds. Read on. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Come on. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Go to one of my favorite scriptures. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And verse 24. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks. But unto them which are called both blacks and Latinos. That's all it's saying. Come on. Christ, the power of God uh -huh. and the wisdom of God. Read on. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The foolishness of God is blacks and Latinos. That's us. It says that we are wiser than men because the world looks at us as a foolish people, as the bottom, as, come on, read on, watch this. And the weakness, the weaknesses of God is stronger than men. And we're viewed as the weak ones, the feeble race. Come on. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty, not many noble are called. So now Paul is addressing to the Corinthians, you have to see your calling. How that not many wise men after the flesh are called. Come on. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world. But God chose the foolish things of the world, which is us, read. To confound the wise. To confound the wise. Because the world will look at them, at that committee, where they were asking them questions, as wise. These are well-learned scholars. They knew what they were doing. They translated the Bible. But just like that, it's easy for us to confound them with Bible verses. That's why you have to stay in the Bible. You always win when you stay in the Bible. Always. Read on. And God had chosen the weak things of the world uh -huh. to confound the things which are mighty. Come on. And base things of the world. And things which are despised. And things which are despised. Come on. Have God chosen ye. And things which are not to bring to naught. Things that are. To bring to naught. Things that are. Get Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. The this book, is one of the first scriptures I heard when I came here in IUIC. Right here. Isaiah 28 9. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who is the Most High going to choose to understand this Bible? Everybody in here right now, all students, how do you understand this Bible? Read on. Them that are weaned from the milk uh -huh. and drawn from the breast. Them that are weaned from the milk. What's the milk, brothers? The law. Where would you go to explain the milk, brothers? To, exactly. First Peter 2, 1 to 2. Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept, uh -huh. precept upon precept, uh -huh. line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Here a little in the Old Testament, there a little in the New Testament. Here a little in the Apocrypha, there a little in the New Testament. Here a little in the Apocrypha, there a little in the Old Testament. That's how we explain the Bible. Yeah, hold your question. Hold your question. Proverbs 4 and 7. Proverbs 4 and 7. Proverbs 4 and 7. 
Think about it. We got classes three days a week, three, three times a day, seven days a week, four chapters a day, camp videos, radio shows. The wisdom is out there. It's all on how bad you want it. Read this, Proverbs 4 and 7. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 7. Uh-huh. Wisdom is the principal thing. Right. Therefore, get wisdom. The Bible is the wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get the wisdom. But look at what it says. Come on. And with all thy getting, get understanding. And with all thy getting, get understanding. All right? Get understanding. What's your question in the back? What's your question? Go ahead. Give him the mic. Hey, just yell it out. <laughs> Can you use um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 9 and 10 as also a precept to that? For wisdom? For, yeah. For wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Get that real quick as we close out. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Love righteousness. Yea, that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart seek him. And then you said 9 and 10? Go ahead. Verse 9. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly, and the sound of his word shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. And you want to go here to explain what now? Too much explaining. You want easier scriptures. Scriptures right to the point. But it's, it's you know, at least you want to try, you know, yeah, it's good, it's good. All right, so uh, one more scripture. Go to Revelation chapter 22, verse 18. Last scripture. Revelation 22, verse 18. Right here, read this. The book of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall add unto these things, it says the Lord shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So I hope y'all understand we at war. We at war. That's why we got to be here. That's why we got to be here studying. That's why you want to be communicating with brothers on the phone. That's why you want to be communicating. Y'all sisters, make sure y'all in the tightest twos. Studying and being ready. That's why we said also business cards. Give the people the business cards when you meet them so they understand. All right? So with that, we're going to say shalom. All right? All right. You got 6 p.m. class or 12 p.m. class Sunday? Uh, Israel, don't forget, send your donations to your local sanctuaries. Send your donations to the uh, main uh, donation, Israel at IsraelUnite.org. All right, so with that, we're going to say shalom. Wait for the deacon for the 12 p.m. class, all right?